Hello, hello, hello. We've got Siemens S65 here today. I'll focus on it. Yeah, so this is the flagship of the 65 series of Siemens phones. I don't remember this. Uh, it came out sometime in 2004. There was a whole series of phones. Siemens always did this. And yeah, as I said, this was a flagship because of some of the features of this phone, but uh, the truth is for the pretty much the entire series 65, um, the fact is that uh, all of those phones are mostly the same from both hardware and software standpoint with only minor differences. The minor differences in this case was the uh, presence of Bluetooth and a memory card, which is quite interesting. So I'll try to open the memory card here, maybe. I'll get in, maybe not. Ah, here it is, okay. Do we actually have a memory card inside? I'm not sure. I will have a hard time getting in. I think there's a memory card in there. I'll focus on it again so that you can see. Uh, it's the reduced size MMC. So it's like the MMC card, but just half the size, something like that. Yeah, that'll be enough. Um, I cannot get it out because I don't have long enough fingernails, obviously. Okay, so um, as I started the description, we can continue from the bottom. This is just a system connector for both the data cable and the charger. And then on the right hand side, we've got the volume key, which is plastic, even though it looks like metallic, but it's not. It's all just a plastic phone, but guess it looks kind of nice. From the top, there's a dent that's not supposed to be there. This probably is from a lanyard. Uh, nothing much here. There's the infrared port, of course. That's it, very much. Um, from the back, this uh, connected for the external antenna, which could have been covered by something, but I don't think it was. You didn't get any cap or anything to hide this. Um, this is a camera, well, this is an interesting camera, actually, because uh, it's a 1.3 megapixel, which uh, was quite a lot, actually, for 2004. Um, it's not a very good camera, though, even though it has a relatively high resolution, but, yeah, that's kind of to be expected. We can go underneath the cover, where we can see that the battery is not original anymore, and underneath we've got... The information about the phone, as you can see, it was made in Germany. Uh, Siemens was a German brand in general, but they also had factories in Germany, obviously. So that's good. And we can turn it on now and see what's inside. Um, I do apologize. I seem to have some trouble with focusing properly in this video. I'll try to keep that under control. Yeah, so this is the book boots in sequence kind of please confirm switch on uh, okay the english is a little bit broken with this one but yeah uh, another typical feature for siemens phones that you always had to confirm that you really wanted to switch them on um which i guess is a logical state of procedure if you have um, I don't know, your phone in the back or something like that, so it doesn't actually turn on by accident or anything like that, especially a border plane. I guess it's uh, like a logical precaution, but for someone who turns the phone on and off relatively frequently, this uh, could be a little bit too much. I don't really know. <laughs> anyway, the screen is big. The resolution is not so big though. I think this is 132 by 176, something like that. So that's the, not the greatest one, but uh, it did the job. And uh, the keypad, very comfortable as a matter of fact. It's all made of hard plastic, which is good because it's easier to press. All buttons work. It's all kind of nice. All right, um, we can actually Look into the menu without any further ado. Uh, we've got some functional keys here. You can see this one actually opens the options for the SIM toolkit, so that's not very really interesting. And the other one 
uh, it, you could actually have some function underneath as well. Now it says info because, uh, yeah, it's uh, trying to search for the network and it fails. Yeah, there's pretty much no coverage here at all for GSM, that says. So um, you can see there's a Bluetooth icon. So that was like a typical the S65. Uh, the other ones only had like an infrared port. The other ones being like the C65, which I think was probably the cheapest one. Then was the rugged one, the M65. There was also CX65 and uh, a Cell65. I'm actually not sure. These That was the slider. I'm not sure whether that one had Bluetooth or not. I'd be lying. I didn't check the specifications for the others, unfortunately. So you can do it for me if you want. Yeah, no signal and a full battery because I charged it in the morning before I made this video. And um, there's a key for entering the web browser, I guess. Oh yeah, oh yeah, network not available. Yes, it's not gonna be, I'm sorry. And this, these are your last dialed calls basically. I don't have any here. I'll try to refocus again in case we have any issues and we enter the main menu. Looks like this, nine icons. So the functions are address book, call records, O2 active, camera messages, organizer, extras, my stuff and setup. Uh, I like the graphics for these icons. Uh, now this is again for those who actually remember the other uh, 65 series. Siemens phones. Unfortunately, I don't have any at the moment. Maybe one day I will. But they had some, oh, like, well, relatively ugly hand drawn icons. You know, it was trying to be jolly, but I didn't personally enjoy it very much. This one looks much nicer, you know, for the, this type of a phone. If you take a look at the design of it, you can see that it's kind of like a business um, minded. I would say a business focused phone. So of course the menu must look a little bit nicer as well. And they've got my menu underneath the left hand key. Yeah, that's just a list of various different functions that you, you could have, you know, like quick access to something, which is kind of nice. And we've got some other options here big letters yeah that does this so the letters are bigger but then also the individual items are just like one item per page which for the screen as big as this is probably an overkill they could have done it a little bit better i'll go back to small letters then illumination oh what happened once more illumination Oh yeah, okay. You can adjust it like this, that's kind of nice. And you can eject card, that means we have a memory card in there, as I showed earlier. Let's start from, from here. So the address book, now you can see the hand-drawn icons actually here in the header. So yeah, <laughs> there's still some residue of this horrible graphic. Um, anyway, uh, we've got the option show entries, which I can do this time because I know that the that it's empty pretty much. And you have the option to add a new entry from here, or you can also do it from here, and that's the same thing. And you've got last name, first name, phone number. So it's could be like first name could be Jeff. And the phone number could be one, two, three, four, five, or something else that doesn't really exist. I've got Many, many other options here. Email is probably one that anyone would use. Fax, probably not in 2004 anymore. Uh, yeah, you could add a birthday. You could add a picture. Maybe a ringtone as well. All fields. Okay, so there are even more of those here. Oh yeah, we have, we have ICQ number. An AIM screen name. That's quite fascinating. Uh, 
Wireless Village user ID. This is, uh, yeah, Wireless Village is a service that I mentioned a couple of times in relation to the Nokia phones. Uh, Siemens supported it too, but that was a network provider dependent service, and I don't know about a single one network provider that will actually have this, uh, like, support for this uh, technology. So, unfortunately, I never got to try it. Yeah, um, and the other things we can add Jeff like this. We're okay with the number. I'm see what it looks like, yeah. And unfortunately it doesn't show the number here. Instead it just shows the icon and no group. Well, that's a bit underwhelming, but okay. I've got business card, which is the exact same entry, except uh, this time you just uh, fill it out about yourself and then you can share it with the rest of the people. Then we've got groups. Many different groups. Yeah, of course, you can just add people into groups and then probably you can uh, assign individual ringtones to these groups. That's probably how it works. Default book, um, phone book and address book, which is kind of confusing name. A phone book is basically stored on a SIM card and address book is in the internal memory. So you can choose which one you want to use, obviously. Uh, we've got call records. That's basically just missed calls, received calls, dialed calls. I don't know why they have this word order here, whatever. Delete records, all of them, duration and charges. Okay, let's see all outgoing calls. 10 hours, I'm out of focus again, I'm sorry. Uh, 10 hours, 43 minutes. That's how much someone was using this. Incoming calls, not so much. There you go. I've got O2 Active, which is obviously the same thing that you can also launch with pressing this button. Fair enough. Uh, then the camera. So the camera, as I said, is a one megapixel. Doesn't look the par at all. I mean, like I can reach for, I can reach for this remote control here. And This is how we make a photo in the premium quality. Yeah, you can delete it. I can keep it so I can show you in full resolution in this video. I can show some photos and some videos and so on. It takes a long time also to actually save it, but okay. You can change. And oh, that's zoom. And that's like the exposition, except it's not. It's just pretend exposition. Not really sure. There you go. Then we've got messages. Support for MMS and EMS as well. So when you go create new, you got your options. So this is like, um, hello. Now I failed to actually type it properly because I can't really. Hello. And uh, this is how we make, yeah, a comma. There you go. It's always kind of difficult to figure out actually where uh, where you have the special characters, where you have the the space. And although it's different from Nokia phones here, the space is made with number one. So, hello, how are you? I made an extra full stop there, which is not supposed to be there. I would get used to it, I believe. MMS editor is this. You can add a sound and a picture and a piece of text. And email. Yeah, is logically this. No problem. Then we've got various different folders for your messages, whatever you like. Organizer. Quite a lot of functions here. So um, let's start from the beginning. We've got calendar looks like this okay this is your 
day, I believe. And then you can just add a new memo of some sort. And I've got appointments, uh, which seems to be the same thing, actually, without the monthly view. Then I've got tasks. Tasks, that's a different thing. As you can see that the forms for entering these uh, these entries are pretty much the same. Um, it's simple, actually. I like the layout of the form. That is just, um, well, kind of very modern compared to the other phones of that era where you just had one screen after the other and you would always fill out something. And here, everything is in, in just one screen and it looks like an actual form. Mm, makes well, That makes sense to me. So then we've got notes. Those should be just text notes. Yes. Unfortunately, only 160 characters. But it's just uh, text files. So again, typing hello. Oh, this time we have a bold font, unlike the messages. I uh, wonder why only 160 characters. That's an uh, unnecessary limitation, in my opinion. We've got confidential notes. That means... I actually don't know what the code is. Is it four zeros only? A oh, new phone code, I see. There hasn't been one. Uh, yeah, so you can also have notes that uh, will be hidden underneath, uh, underneath the coat. So that's, that's nice. Missed appointments. Good. Dictation machine. That's a sound recorder. Yes, it is. I'm not recording yet, actually. <laughs> yeah, I press record and I start recording. And then I stop it. 129 minutes, by the way. It's quite a lot. It's over two hours. That's that's good. So use loudspeaker, yes. The quality is pretty bad, as you can see, or here rather. But uh, there you go. That's 2004, baby. Okay, we've got time zones, which actually opens like this. So I presume it's a Java application, a built-in Java application for some reason. And you can change the time zone on the map. We are in Berlin. Sounds correct. I'm not going to change anything now. Calendar setup. Yeah, that's just settings. <laughs> in a form of a form, again. <laughs> All right. And the bottom part, extras. There'll be a lot of extras, right? So O2 SIM, as I said, that's a SIM toolkit. Then we've got alarm clock. That's a repeated alarm clock like this with a very interesting interface. Sure, why not? Then we've got sound recorder, which is actually pretty much the same thing as the dictation machine. Yeah, with the same time and everything, with the same interface. But bizarrely, they cannot see each other's recordings. Yeah, the recording I made previously is not visible here. And there's a new one. And yeah, otherwise it's the exact same thing. Interesting. And we've got calculator. Okay, which opened also like a built-in Java application. So that's probably where it is. Now it's blinking. I don't know why. So let's make a calculation of some sort. Um, yeah. I can't argue with that. There we go. Sometimes a phone actually takes a while to process what you want from it. So it's also kind of interesting. Unit converter, another Java application, obviously. And yeah, so one meter is 3.28 feet. That's what they say. I'm no expert on Imperial units. So it's possible. I've got to trust it. Then we've got stopwatch. Stopwatch is normal. So, yeah, you can save it somehow. Good. Stopwatch list. Oh, yeah. Good. We've got countdown. That's a uh, countdown. That's a countdown. <laughs> yeah, easy as that. So, if I start it, go to the home screen.
That was a bit strange. Those beeps should be, you know, the same time apart from each other, but I'm sure that between the first and the second beep, there was a much shorter time than between the third and the second beep. That's kind of weird. Okay. And anyway, uh, remote synchronization. Oh, uh, yeah, I see. So that uh, mm, you need a profile and then you can actually uh, synchronize your content with uh, Outlook and stuff. Then we've got a device manager. That's actually, you know, a different kind of synchronization. File system. Which is interesting because it has pretty much the same options as a separate item here called My Stuff. We'll get to that. So if I go back, we've got games, which is kind of nice. Oh, we're going to have to go through the games, right? All right, let's do it quickly. We've got Sea Battle. Um, the phone is a bit slow when it comes to... Nice. Place music. I'll try to. No. I cannot turn the volume up. You can see what the volume keys do, actually. Let's play a game. Let's see what it is about. Captain. Okay. Oh, Captain Knight. Okay. Position your fleet. Flash of Bronstein, Erwin, and Mitchell. That's... Oh, I see, I see. That's going to take a very long time, I'm afraid. I'm going to have to cut it out or something. I'm not sure. But... Yeah. Mm. Okay, I'm not going to play it here. Abandon your fleet, yes, please. It's obvious what this is. Actual sea battle, literally. You know, the um, the game that you play with just a pen and paper. <laughs> so, so you can also play it here against uh, the brains of the phone, which is oh, quite an interesting option for, for a Java game, that is. Next one. Also takes time to load. It was really lucky that uh, those applications like Calculator and Unit Converter, they loaded pretty quickly because they didn't really have anything going on. Uh, this thing. Siemens 3D Rally. Uh, if you say so. It's a bit choppy, but it's 3D, fair enough. I'll skip it for now. And try and play the arcade, 1.6 liter, why not? Training, let's do the training. Uh, transmission automatic, that's fine. Uh, loading progress bar. Yeah, sure, take your time. Move the remote away. Oh, yeah, I'm playing already. Okay, didn't realize. That's so incredibly jerky. That's absolutely unplayable. Really? Am I really supposed to go to the left? I don't think so. I'm, yeah, wrong way. You don't say. That happens if you press a button and the phone reacts five seconds later. That was quite horrible, actually. Bloody hell. Now the, yeah, now the entire phone is kind of on a slow side. I hope it recovers quickly. Oh, uh, dear. Uh, that was not a very good game. Sea Battle was much better because it actually wasn't anything 3D. Thing magic worms. Let's see worms because that's an actual popular franchise of games. I don't know, does it open or not? I don't know. I 
And now I'm really not sure. Okay. It works. Yeah. Lovely music. Yeah, I'm a single player quick game, please, traditional. I don't know what to expect, honestly. A game, maybe? There we go. Play one. Press five when ready. We are ready now. What am I supposed to do? Oh, move. Okay, what next? Maybe if I read some instructions to this game, I would know what to do. Okay, I have no idea what happened. It's also jerky and horrible, unfortunately. Now the entire phone is jerky and horrible. After I closed it. Now, now it's recovered. It also got hot. That's interesting. Because these feature phones, you know, they're not really... They don't typically do... Typically... They don't typically do that. That's what I mean to say. But now, um, well, there we go. So we've got applications. <sighs> A lot of them. Okay. Let's see. If all of these applications <laughs> take this long to load, then please wait, it would be like half of a video. Search for cocktail packs on server? No, because that doesn't work anymore, does it? Downloads. Oh, I see, I don't have any downloads. Okay, so that's not gonna work. How come that this button doesn't do anything? It's kind of annoying. Now it does it. Good. Download assistant on this phone? I don't think so. Emergency phone book. Photo editor and survival dictionary. Uh, what's a survival dictionary? I wonder. Please wait. Yeah, sure. We can do that. Often heard and yes, German, yeah, I see, yeah, okay, so that's like a travel dictionary, a traveler's dictionary, if you will. Yes, please, quit. Fascinating. Photo editor, I'm not going to even try. <laughs> yeah, okay, the whole phone froze there for a while, but that's good now. Bookmarks, of course. Download Assistant. Oh. Download Assistant is the Java game. is the exact same Java game that we saw in the applications as well. That's... Well, let's not do that. Please. Hang on. I don't want to. I'm not going to download anything because I don't have internet connection. I believe we're done with extras, aren't we? Yes, we are. We most definitely are. Looks like this video is going to be longer than I thought. Anyway, let's see my stuff. So that's uh, just folders with files, as you would expect. We've got the multimedia card here, which is now empty, mostly. We've got a few folders there, but that's cool. How big is it? Can we see? Uh, drive info, probably. Oh no, yeah, that's the 10 megabytes of internal memory, and then we've got a 30 megabyte. So that's a 32 megabyte uh, memory card in there. Unfortunately, um, I don't know what was the biggest uh, memory supported by this. Well, it could have been quite a lot. But unfortunately, it doesn't support anything else than like the one megapixel photos, you know. There's no support for like music files or anything like that, so... Um, it's a bit uh, questionable when it comes to um, understanding why uh, the MMC is even supported here. 
Anyway, <laughs> we've got pictures, of course. There's, uh, there's like a wallpaper, one wallpaper for each folder, it looks like. We've got EMS, okay, so that's black and white pictures like this. I'll go through them quickly. You may have seen some of those also in other Siemens phones previously. Some frames, that's just for the purpose of editing your photos, of course. And icons, which are, well, something like clip arts, or maybe not clip arts, but yeah, just uh, things that you could put on your photos as overlay. It could be quite jolly. Look, has a Hello Kitty hat, party hat, but it's Hello Kitty. It's interesting. <laughs> no copyright infringement here, I guess. And what else do we have? Logos. Interesting. So you could have a logo on your screen, I suppose. So as, oh yeah. Show me. Okay, that's just not gonna work if, <laughs> if I don't have signal. Okay, that doesn't matter really. Uh, we've got MMS here. Yeah, those are MMS pictures, they actually work pretty well as wallpapers, don't they? Yeah, I mean like, yeah, this one. I like this one, so if I can have this one as a uh, wallpaper, like this. Yeah, okay, <laughs> looks almost good. Never mind. We have Siemens Mobile, and that's just the very generic wallpaper I can see. And I've got more wallpapers. Oh, the Earth. That's pretty nice. Go. Okay. Some photos that I've taken and so on, I'll put them in the video. Or maybe you've seen it already in the previous section of the video, of course. And uh, we've got... Oh, there's a pre-recorded video of some sort. Do have the option to play it full screen somehow? Oh, sorry. No. Okay, seems like this phone cannot do it. Okay. I've got animations. Um, oh, that's basically just animations that are part of the themes. I see. Not much of a point of going through all of them, I guess. Sounds. Uh, there's going to be a separate video for sounds as well. So we've got four themes. Blue Abstract is probably the one that we have at the moment. Siemens Mobile. Let's try this one. That could be some black and white or grey or something. The colors are slowly changing. I thought I could go through all the themes, but it really takes quite a long time to apply them. Okay, a slight difference, I guess. Not much of a difference. Let's go for Cosmos then. That's gonna be fun. Mm-hmm. That's a dark one. It's blinking on the camera quite horribly. Okay, so I'll switch it to the desert, and <laughs> that'll be all of them. I guess that the desert will be a light wallpaper as well, and light theme in general. Just want to say that the screen doesn't really blink that like that in real life. That's again just uh, just what it looks like on a camera. 
as expected. Oh no, it's dark as well. Oh dear. Yeah, that's not good. Let's have the blue abstract again. Because it actually looks better on the camera. All right, color skins. Um, pretty much the same as themes, probably don't change wallpapers and stuff. I don't know. Games, we were through those and applications and miscellaneous. And that's the data inbox. Data inbox is uh, when you receive um, uh, files uh, via infrared or Bluetooth, something like that. It always goes there to the data inbox and from there you can move it elsewhere. That's how it works. And the last item is setup. So we've got some profiles here. I guess maybe you can change your profiles through these. No, that's a dictation machine. No. Okay. I thought it was a quick profile selection. Well, it doesn't seem to be. And then I've got themes. That's the exact same thing that we saw in my stuff. Display setup. Yeah, let's go through the languages. We've got English, German, French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, Catalan, oh, Brazilian Portuguese, interesting, <laughs> Greek and Turkish. Probably never seen a phone that would have like both versions of Portuguese like this, unless it was a smartphone, like modern smartphones can do that. But yeah, this is interesting. Then I've got all of these options big letters we've been there and illumination as well own greeting that's uh, just a piece of text that appears at the beginning when you switch the phone on and we've got ringtones as i said i will go through those separately and then we've got call setup that's uh, all of these options relatively boring and we've got a phone setup key tones which could be like this horrible tone or click. That's just disturbing. Let's keep it silent. Info tones, that's just those random beeps on pop-up windows. Auto off phone identity. Oh yeah, IMEI, here we go. And some tests. Sound check. This is basically just uh, to test whether your phone works properly or something, I guess, which is fantastic. Then uh, we've got clock setup. That's just date and time and all of these things. Then we've got connectivity. We can see we have GPRS. We, ha we have infrared ports. We've got Bluetooth. Data services, HTTP profile, all of these things, all in one place. Security is various different codes. We can block various options. And we've got network setups where you can select your preferred network and so on. And accessories. What accessories do we have? A car kit and headset. I suppose that these only appear once you connect uh, the phone to one of these options. So probably the previous owner had these available. I don't. Well, that's it. Pretty much. I can switch it off now. This video turned out to be a little bit longer than the other videos, probably because of a number of various games and applications and because uh, they also took quite a long time to load. So oof, I wonder if there are any people who actually made it all the way till the end through my rambling. I pretty much doubt it, but if you did, I hope you liked it. And also check out the video with ringtones as usual. And uh, well, I'll see you next time. Bye.